You're listening to a podcast of The Mojo with Steph Renee. Weekdays, 10 a.m. till noon on 900 a.m. WURD.com. And speaking of back in Philadelphia, familiar faces and wonderful Philly. opportunities to celebrate culture in our city. Mm-hmm. Mike, please. Uh, first of all, hello. Welcome back. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. I, was, I feel like I haven't been here all week. I was here in studio on Monday and I haven't been back till today. Oh, you been doing the library? It's been, yeah, it's been a busy, busy week, but good to we, see you. We are, we are here in the studio. It's a very exciting day. Uh, I've, been, I've had the pleasure of spending the whole morning with our next guest, our guest for the hour, um, who is here. We, we talked to her a few weeks ago when, yes. when Rain was in New York uh, premiering her world premiere of Fried Chicken and Latkes. And now we have her live in the studio, uh, Miss Rain Pryor. Woo! Hello. It's nice to be L-I-V-E live. Um, I feel like I need to be doing like a poetry <laughs> singing thing now because I got like poetry like in my yes, veins. Yes, snaps you know? and, and candles and, and all that and good stuff. in the studio. <laughs> yes, I was Along like. with Daquan and Julie. <laughs> I was yo, like, yo. Yes, indeed. We got so much. Course, we got my, lots of big hair in the studio course, today. I'm happy. Very comical fluetry, but, um <laughs> now, Did you ever do the spoken? You've done everything. I've done, have done I have done spoken word. word. I okay. have. I have. A, I used to have a character actually in my solo show that did spoken word. Yes. Yeah. Were you a big fan of the big, the neo soul scene here? I am me? actually. That's oh, love neo soul. <laughs> I was gonna you say, give me Flo Tree and say, Jill Scott and just squeeze it all face. together for me, and I'd be like a happy camper all day. Wow. Yeah. Break it down to me. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Right. It's a great thing. It is a great thing. Well, before before we jump into this conversation, which is going to be far reaching, uh, uh, I'm, I want to invite it. people. What are the numbers again? We want people to call in. Yes, two one five six three four eight zero six five. Toll free at one eight six six three six one zero nine hundred. And for those of you who cannot call but still want to offer some input, ask some questions, then you know you can tweet Mike and me while we're here on the air. You tweet Mike at Real Black, and that's R E E L B L A C K. You can tweet me at W U R D underscore S Renee. That's W U R D underline S R E N E E. And we will be able to share your questions with Ms. Pryor as she's here with us. And you can tweet me at Black Ish. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> well, we're, gonna, we're gonna get into all that. I mean, what? You know, we like throw somebody off, y'all. Like, be quiet. It's at Rain Prior. Follow Black Talk Radio. We're black. <laughs> I'm black. He, as you, as you can tell, black. Steph, she has no filter, and she, she's half of me on, is black. She's hopped and up on nicotine and coffee. Half. Oh my! Right. I know, I should be quiet. No, 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 no we <laughs> want this. Oh, okay, good, good. We good. like this. We yes, like this. You are invited to act I'm up. I'm looking at the Philly just, just freeway. Just with FCC regulations in yes, mind. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're... Looking at a sign that says, happy-ish across the way. <laughs> See, made you look, though. It does yeah, say happy yeah, I hadn't even paid right? attention. It does. <laughs> See? <laughs> So That's Ray, a beautiful graffiti. Ray, yes. what brings you to town? I'll let you <laughs> What do. brings me to town is I have my documentary, That Daughter is Crazy, that is showing at the, at, the, at the Painted Bride, hosted by Real Black. And the Painted Bride, yes. And the yes. Painted Bride. 7 p.m. tonight. Because, yes. the, Ooh, still because the documentary is Real Black. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> or Blackish. Or Blackish. Yeah, yeah. something. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, tickets still available. You can get them at the box office tonight. Yes. And uh, it's a great documentary. It's about the, the making of... Fried Chicken and Latkes, which is my show about growing up black and Jewish. And it shows a different side of the prior familia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Now, as, as this is the Real Black Radio Hour, we yes. talk about black film. Really? We would love to get your insights into <laughs> what's going on in the entertainment industry. But I guess first, first and foremost... Richard Pryor, your, yes. father, your famous father. He was black. Yes, he, yes, he was. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm, and proud. I'm proud. Right. And proud. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I have a real connection to Richard Pryor. You know, I did my fourth grade book report was on Richard Pryor. Really? Oh my God, how adorable is fourth that? Grade? Did you get in trouble? Yeah. First, no. your mom, your mom I was let like, you watch Richard Pryor about, in fourth grade? We used right? to, yeah, when, when my grandparents left, I still had right. a little okay. area where they right, you had snuck, the yeah, See, right? that's, the, that's right. the caveat because it was the same thing for me. Right. My dad had Richard Pryor and Red Fox and all kinds of comedy albums in the basement. See, but, you all but had I to was, sneak in the I basement yeah, and I was right there in the living room. I was shuffled upstairs, you know, when my dad had company over to play poker in the basement. And, you know, so they would listen to your dad's album you know just the, the whole idea of 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 how we celebrated um 
our comedy in mm-hmm. our spaces, in our homes, and every and with our friends. Right. Um, you know, and we've gotten away from that with our music and with so much more of our culture. Yes, we have. Right. Let's bring it back. Yeah. Right. Let's start a movement. So, did your dad do like stand up in the living room? Or you know, I mean, like kind of you test know, out no, ideas on you. No, he didn't. He was just dad. He was so normal. Like he might do little characters now and then, just because he was playing with us. Mm-hmm. But it was he, no. His work was like work. And then when he came home, it was a whole nother you know, scenes with hookers and drugs and stuff. So, but um, <laughs> just joking. <laughs> no, not no, no, joking. No, not. Not. Half yeah. of me is joking because okay. the other half. <laughs> He was dad, so it's hard to explain that to people. I'm like, he was hands on, hands off, depended on where the cocaine was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. I mean, and my, even at that time, he would be present and like, so kids, you know, <laughs> right? Well, you know what's really interesting is that I, I'm not aware of my father having a, a drug issue, right? But when my father was eulogized, my dad passed four years ago, and Sometimes. his his pastor said, but my dad was 90. Right. He lived a good long life. Right. Um, his, the refrain of his eulogy was he was a good man but not a perfect man and so all the kids sitting in the front right. we under we were like you clearly understood what that the pastor was, right? knew our father all, as well right. as we did right. because that's right. what we would have said as well right. we were all kind of chuckling I, about it name me a perfect man right. there ain't no perfect man right. or a woman on the planet right 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 and everybody has their stuff. Everyone has their stuff. Look, if we were listening to my dad in the basement, trust me, we had stuff. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. But, you know, I think I think it's hard for people to sort of imagine the world that you lived in. Yes. Growing up, having a famous father and having a father who was famous in the way that your father was famous. Absolutely. Because that's not, you know, kind of standard celebrity variety. You know, no, your dad was different. very outspoken and he lived his life very out loud listen when your house is filled and I said it this afternoon you know when your house is filled with people like you know Richard Pryor Dick Gregory um, um, you know the, these activists Muhammad Ali you have your your life is different yeah. it just is different from everybody else and there's a there's a perspective on on our culture and who we are and and my dad loved soul food so there's soul food constantly in the house like and I tell people this too I didn't know there were poor black people Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? My dad lived a certain way. So I thought we were naturally rich until you learn about your culture and your history. My dad's saying, no, this is how I grew up. This is how it was for your grandmother and blah, blah, blah. And Mm -hmm. you're going through the history and you're like, what? Mm -hmm. Say what? And my mom was the opposite. Being a Jewish woman, you know, who had a black child, all of a sudden she became poor because of that. So I thought (laughs) white people were the poor ones, you know, not that they had a struggle. Mind you, but yeah. I thought that it was it was different in that way. So my idea of our greatness already was we were already great. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. It, I mean, I'm um, finishing up Harry Belafonte's memoir, oh, and so he has part. I just met his daughter. Came to my show, Gina, and it was nice. wonderful. Yes. Well, so 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 you can relate to this then because part one of the book is about him becoming famous. Yes. Uh, you know, the artist part of him. Right. Part two of the book is the activist part of him, yes. you know, using the celebrity as leverage to now be instrumental in the civil rights movement yes. and gather people and really speak to these issues. Part three is more reflective because he's thinking about how he tried to balance all of that in his own life and what trickled down to the kids or right. what didn't trickle down to the right. kids. And he, he was the product of two biracial parents. Right. All of his children children have married white folks right. so he's you know sort of thinking well did, did it lose something did I lose something in the translation and yeah. and the truth is no because I think he spoke from the, about the human spirit see what and and I'm gonna go deep for a second if you don't mind sure. so I I think what we're what we as a as a culture of a people is uh, when we call ourselves black I think what we're missing is it's not about the it's in in white supremacy world that we kind of live in it's about skin color Mm -hmm. what it is for us it's it's holding on to our culture so if his children possess the culture like i have possessed the culture it doesn't matter who you're married to so i think what we are losing track of in our society right now is the fact of our own identity and our culture who are we and we were talking discussing this go ahead deeply in the car so just to clarify i mean how do you identify i mean i identify my well it's two ways you know i could identify myself like i said earlier the raven simone way and go i'm human or i can (laughs) or i identify as as if i'm Politically correct, I'm a black Jewish Ifa. Um, if I do it my way, I'm 
I'm a Ifa woman. Mm-hmm. Um, and I practice my ancestry for the reason to keep and contain my culture and a spirituality that for me is tangible in its in its belief system and its result, as opposed to just sitting and praying something will happen. The, the things that I do actually transform and happen so I can touch, I can feel, I can smell, I can, you mm-hmm. know, taste it. And um, for me, that's very powerful. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. so as an, let me ask you, as an artist, yes. how are you processing all this stuff that's going on right now in the news in, in terms of um, race is definitely at the forefront right. of a lot of discussion? Well, what's interesting and, and which I think is, is great even tonight that the fact that you're showing That Daughter's Crazy mm-hmm. is the fact that it deals with that. So I'm, I deal with race in my show. I deal with racism in my life. And, um, and as, as an artist, and from what my dad gave to me and bequeathed to me was not money, but a sense of truth and knowledge. And so in my experience as an artist, I am responsible for the truth and the knowledge that I speak. And I use it to transform because I believe I have an obligation because of who I am, because of my lineage, I have an obligation to transform. Mm-hmm. So I use I use what's going on socially to do that. And I don't care about political correctness. I'm not that person. Other than on the radio, not to say curse words. But I am not <laughs> that person. So I am very driven to transform how we think and how we can adapt the truth of what our culture is about. Yes. And we had, I mean, that's what, I, can I go to what we talked about in the car real quick? Yeah, I think, I mean, are we close or? I mean, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, well, let's, let's continue let's the point. Yeah, then we'll, then we'll go okay. to break. So I, I, I was saying how long it's taken me to, to develop this idea because nobody at the time wanted to do it. And I think now is the time. I was shopping around an idea called Know Your Truth, Change Your Destiny. Hmm. And what it was, it was the secret, like the secret that's out for us, people who are black people of color. Mm -hmm. And part of that is to go back in our history. And it's not just to go back and go, okay, there were slaves and there was this and there was that happened. But the psychology that has been implemented on us of why we think the way we think that we don't own our greatness. And we have been subconsciously put in this position through our DNA now Mm -hmm. to think we are less than. When we keep posting Black Lives Matter, but we keep showing dead black people, we keep Mm. showing the violence that's out there and saying Black Lives Matter, we are subconsciously enforcing in ourselves Black Lives Don't Matter. Mm. So the thing is to transition the way we think, to understand that we have been, like I said, conditioned throughout history to really understand what that history is of why we think we are less than. We are not less than. Yeah. We are so powerful, which is why people are afraid of us. Yes. To right. begin with. And so when we can own that ownness, right, then we can change what our destiny is. Listen, shaking the tambourine. <laughs> we got to take our first break, but we ha- have Rain Pryor here with us for the entire hour of Real Black Radio, a part of today's mojo. If you want to join in the conversation, you are welcome. 215 634 8065, toll free at 1 866 361 0900. Mike and I both have our elect electronics open so we can take your twitter questions as well him at real black me at wurd underscore s renee and we will continue with our conversation with rain Pryor when we come back after this we're just here uh, collectively head nodding in the studio as we appreciate the good R&B, but also talk about this idea of legacy as we are joined. Mike D is in the house representing Hello. Real Black and uh, Rain Pryor is our special guest for this hour of today's program. Thank and, you. And uh, we're having a good time with the music yeah. and the conversation. But I, I, I've, I've got a, I've got a question. So I'm okay, not, I'm not disagreeing with you. I, no, 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 I, no. I completely. And you can disagree. I'm on, I'm on your wavelength. I might knock you out, but you can but disagree. Just, just playing devil's advocate about this thing. I think you know, if you, you're saying if we stop tweeting uh, hashtag Black Lives Matter, that we're subconsciously we're putting in a message out that no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. Okay, I'm saying if you're posting Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. with pictures enforcing Black Lives Do Not Matter, you are subconsciously wiping out that Black Lives Matter. You're undermining. You're the undermining the message. Okay. When we support each other in the Black Lives Matter movement, we need to show pictures of Black Lives Mattering. 
Mm. When we show the opposite, we are still enforcing. But see, what we don't realize is that throughout history, we have been subconsciously conditioned to believe we do not matter, which is why we keep posting the trash that we keep posting. Mm. You know, not to, and when I say trash, because I know there's people out there who, you think you're righteous and black. Let me break it down to you. (laughs) If you were righteous and black, you'd be posting things about black fathers in Africa who are raising their children to show that there are men around the world who are of color who raise their children and support their families. You will be showing men in positions of power that are black, women who are positions of power who are black, instead of showing the pictures of what we already know right. of people who have transitioned yeah. because of police brutality, because the psychology, again, if you look at something like... Um, um, uh, 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 Willie Lynch. Mm-hmm. If you take Willie Lynch, the pamphlet, for example, whether it's real or not real, the making of a slave, right? What you see is the beginning of what psychologically transitioned us to not own our power. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's the same reason that we sit there and we'll still comment today. Oh, because she liked. That's why she getting all the work. Because she this, that, that, that. Because her hair is straight. Because da, 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 Well, when people like Tyler Perry and people like, uh, what's his face making that film about my dad? Um, Lee Daniels. Yeah, Lee Daniels. Stop making shows that enforce a culture that doesn't empower us because they want to get the money from the man. Right? right. Again, we'll rise to another level. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's very deep. Like, I'm I'm utterly confused. I think Go a lot ahead. of young people, a lot of young black people, that's I think, crap. are kind of brainwashed into thinking that suddenly things are fair. That that because we're no Who? longer what work- black people do you know that think things are well, fair? I, well, after Obama got elected, I think, <laughs> well, I think uh, we got past the system of oppression. But after Obama got elected, all the time, right. that mm-hmm. that it, this escalated after Obama right. got elected. Mm-hmm. Like it opened the door. Right. There's a whole season on the Negro now. Open. Absolutely. And, and so, and, and to defend Rain's point, there's a reason why the Dream Defenders in particular spoke up about their, I forget what black organization it was. And I want to say it was uh, an LGBTQ organization that was supposed to be having a reception in the same art gallery that has an installation about Michael Brown. And they oh, were like, Chicago? what do we look like standing around with cocktails talking about high art and high education while there is a, a, a an exhibit just to our right of a dead black body mm. a you know we can debate all day long whether it was the artist's right to create this exhibit mm-hmm. but us standing around it you know she she fooling mm-hmm. while this image is just to our side doesn't make any sense logically this is not the place to hold this event. Cocktail. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah, a cocktail party. And so I think that the level of consciousness about how we reinforce this idea that Black Lives Matter is incredibly important. Mm-hmm. The same way that I never grew up not thinking I wasn't going to go to college. Like, it right. wasn't even optional. It was never You're in my go. frame of reference right. that everybody in my family did, that it was something that was important and necessary for me to keep learning my entire life. And so that was the standard in which brings household. me which brings me to what we were talking about slavery and I said the on, the only the only thing I think ever and there's nothing positive about slavery the only thing psychologically ever was the fact that the that black people during our ancestors during the time of slavery self-educated themselves yes and mm-hmm. even if it was in secret and we have stopped self-educating ourselves yep. when we were given the illusion that now we shall be educated fairly and equally yeah. We stopped doing that. Yeah. And the thing, you know, and that's the one thing I would say about my dad and my mother is that they influenced in me never to stop, never to stop learning, mm-hmm. never to stop knowing what the truth is. So the piece of paper might get you the money, might get you these things. But right now, no, because the economy is the way that it is. But n- true knowledge of who you are and what your truth is will get you a lot further. Mm-hmm. And and. And also to learn, well, you know, people say, but we're stuck in this, you know, in this white supremacist world. And is it going to change what we talked about in the car? And I said, the biggest thing you can learn to do is how to be in it, but not of it. Mm -hmm. That's how you play. That's the art of the art of war. Right. How to be in it and not of it. Yeah. So what what do you tell Lotus, for example? I tell Lotus, you better read that darn book. 
but I tell her, you know, I'm like, you're going to college. What is yeah. daughter? Yeah. yeah, you know, it's like she's she is. She's going to go to college. She's going to be educated. I teach her on the, you know, the the inequality that's that's in the world. She needs to know. She's seeing it. She's hearing it. She experiences it for herself, you know, um, and and what that means and how people are going to judge her based on the color of her skin, based on the tightness of her curls, mm-hmm. you know. But thank goodness she's at this phase now at seven where she loves her big hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, she loves her curls. She wants to wear it out all the time. She wants to wear, you know, in any which way that it is. Yeah. You know, and she wears, like, we do we do the braids and the, and the what, you know, she has mm-hmm. all that. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you take her to see Annie? I did. I, you know, and for me, I cried. So I saw it. I didn't cry because, oh, it was a great movie and well acted or anything <laughs> like that. I cried because I saw it as a kid with a white girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so here I am years later. As a mommy. As a mommy. But not only that, my daughter was born. You know, my daughter was born in 2008. So mm-hmm. she sees a black president. Yeah. She sees a black Eddie. She doesn't know any different. Yeah. Mm. So she's empowered already to know she can be great, to know that she can lead. Yeah. And so it's my job as her mother to teach her that, but then to also teach her the history so that when she goes to school and the teachers start to undermine her brilliance, Mm. I get to enforce that she is brilliant. Yes. And so she can stand up and grow. Do you know what I mean? My daughter needs to become a leader, period. No matter whatever she's a leader in, she needs to be a leader. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. You know? and, and I'm curious, you know, with looking at yes. the similarities and also the challenges right. between black community and Jewish community. Right. All right? I, I, I jokingly say that I'm honorary Jewish. I was a youth ambassador to Israel when I was in high school, wow. but I've also taught as a creative writer and as an instructor, right. I've taught Jewish confirmation classes right. about cultural competency. So, right. you know, we have these really intense Uh, conversations about identity and about uh, having a cultural framework for your place in the world, for the work that you want to do, what informs, you know, who you want to be. And I think a lot of people who haven't had as much exposure to the way that that kind of uh, information is folded into Jewish religious teachings and, and just cultural teachings think that we're further apart. Uh, right. as communities than we may actually be the in only, terms of the, the principles. The only way that, the only separation in the idea of community is that is that within that religion and culture, they maintained a sense of community. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yep. A sense of oneness in its own thing. That is the difference. Mm-hmm. So, Slavery, because they weren't slaves. Yes, in did Hitler do what he did in in Germany? It was for a purpose. That man was practicing some kind of weird magic. Let me take over the world. Kind of, he was like devil worship, whatever. Right? <laughs> That's a whole in, insanity. We were brought over, separated from each other, from our families, and then even more divided and more divided and more divided. Right? Where in that do we subconsciously grow a sense of community? And learn how to do that. So that, again, has been stripped away from us. Mm -hmm. So, again, when we go back and we uncover what our history is, we can grow that sense of community and culture and start holding each other up in a different way and holding each other accountable for our corruption. We are we have in every sect of everything. There is a corruption. But when we hold ourselves accountable for our own corruption and the corruption of our people, that again is when we begin that point of change and consciously change so that again we know our greatness right right taking it away from from Go the ahead. from Break the cultural <laughs> no 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 i'm yeah. saying no n- not um uh, but I, I fully i'm with you completely but you also mentioned growing up as the child of a celebrity that yes. your your frames of reference were a little different than, than the average black kid in the hood absolutely right which maybe is a good thing for me being able to speak on this because yeah. i know we are great yeah but i also watched the it of it in hollywood and the mechanisms that are in place there also try not to let my dad know he was great right and to pull him down and give him drugs and give him this and give him that where mama his mother his grandmother when she ran a brothel she literally said why not let the white man pay for it 
Mm -hmm. because he's already stealing it. Mm. That was her reasoning to open up a brothel. She knew the psychology. Mm -hmm. If you're going to steal it, pay for it. Right. And let me, if you got, you know what I mean? Yeah. That that money will circulate back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah. Well, well, that's The woman wore furs. So bootleg, you know? Yeah. <laughs> she knew what was up. <laughs> well, that, that, that's being within it. Yeah. That's part of being within it. But, I mean, just, again, being devil's advocate. I mean, isn't it a two-way street? Don't 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 uh, white people also have to own up to some of this, uh, pro- some of the problem? It's not just I think one. I think the onus comes in into the acceptance, getting rid of the denial that there is privilege. Mm. And I... I I can't you know a half of me can I can't even half of me can't speak on that. Mm-hmm. Um, the person who can pass can speak on it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have never been able to pass. I'm either I'm either considered a Latino mm-hmm. or of Latin descent, mm-hmm. or I'm considered black. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you know what I mean? I've I've never once so, been considered. And that's the truth of it, white, in any form, just based on the color of my skin and the texture of my hair. Does that make sense? All right. But we need reparations. That we're, that's what we're trying to get to. Yeah. I, don't, no, no, I don't know if it's... But the reparations... So what do we do if... It, and this is my psychology on that. So you want reparations for what? For being brought over as a slave? So are we going to go to Africa and back to Ghana and back to Nigeria and back to certain places and claim the land from from us that was stolen right from from the europeans is that how we're going to get reparations because that's what we're talking about because we've already allowed them to take over africa to mm-hmm. drill to give us ebola to give us aids mm-hmm. so now what do we i, I know i'm getting deep well, i'm sorry I think it's, no I think but it's I, ha- about- I have such a i i have such a thing about reparations so slap me on the hand hand me a million dollars and then what yeah i don't think it's about money i think it's really about trying to reorder the system so that things are a little better we have better advantages the only thing i think you can give reparations for is to stand up and say yes we the are the forefathers of this country stole black people ripped them from their homes uh, made you build decided hey we'll free you so you could fight our war not from the goodness of our hearts not because we thought oh you're suffering Mm -hmm. but because we needed more people to fight our damn war between the north and the south (laughs) you know and so we're sorry (laughs) <laughs> we did that. Yeah. Really? And some people just <laughs> some people just want to sorry. I guess and and the and trust me right. when I say that at this independently owned Black Talk radio <laughs> right. station, we I have this argument you. every oh, and like every other day. <laughs> right. and, and it's about what would that look like? What would re- That's what I'm saying. And, and most what people are saying like? and most people are saying even that if we got the money that without fully dismantling the system that allowed the wealth to be built through that corruption right. that we're not doing anything we'd end up oh. paying money right back to people because we don't manufacture things mm-hmm. you know we barely grow things anymore so right. in terms of what we would do with the money would still go into feeding the corrupt system that placed us in subjugation in the first place so it's you know eh, I'm down you know yeah. it's, it's, it's a it's a it's an ongoing argument <laughs> it is an ongoing <laughs> argument until again we realize what our greatness is so the biggest fear of any man is another great man right Hmm. so when we own the fact that we are great that we come from lines of greatness yes that our culture our our, our, even our spirituality is great again that's why that's why for me it's ifa because it's tangible Mm -hmm. i'm not sitting in some church somewhere listening to some pastor preach to me about the prosperity gospel in the hopes that i'm going to get rich because i'm playing to praying to this white god or white person named Jesus. I'm going to my ancestry of the people who have stepped before me, to my Baba Luau, to my Ia, and I'm asking to change my corruption. I'm asking for a path to truth that gives me tangible results so I can live my life in my greatness and walk within my destiny. And I can feel it, I can smell it, and I can taste it. I'm not just sitting there going, okay, I'm going to get on my knees. Jesus, save my mother. Save my mother from her thing. No, I understand that maybe my 
grandmother is not supposed to be safe Mm. at that moment. That maybe Mm. her illness is because she needs peace somehow. Mm -hmm. Or she's done the work that she needed to do here. And now it's for me to carry. Do do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, but we've been taught this thing. We've been ripped from it. We've been ripped from our culture. We've been ripped from the fact that we used to walk around in the dirt and and, and feel and taste. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, we live in this thing where everything's money, money, money. Listen to our music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, listen to the music we put out from the music that was long ago. You know, when you had people like, like you know, in, in the days of Billie Holiday or in the days of Bessie Smith and what they were singing about and what they were feeling. Mm-hmm. Do you know? Yeah. And to even realize that was stolen from us. Yeah, very much so. You, you, you were leading us to this idea of, of the ancestors and the legacy, yes. which is where we want to get yes. back to. I'm getting questions tweeted at me oh, that we nice. need to ask okay. you. And we're all and Please. we're running out of time, can you believe it? No. So we've got to pay some more bills and then we're going to come back and continue today's Real Black Radio with Rain Pryor oh, here shit. at 900 AM WURD. We'll continue in just a moment. And we are happy to have embedded in our WURD studio for this 11 a.m. hour yes. our special guest, Rain Pryor. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you for having here me, tonight by the way. Because Real Black yes. is going to be screening her documentary, That Daughter's Crazy, That's this right. evening at The Painted Bride. And so we actually. I know anyone tuning in right now knows she's crazy. <laughs> I got that. Not, not crazy. Got not according that. to the tweets that right. I've been getting. Oh, nice. I so, so we want to go back to this idea of, of what you have gathered from your life and living and your lineage yes. because that's incredibly yes. important yes. and you made a comment earlier about uh, the film that Lee Daniels is doing yes. on your father right. and we get the feeling that you're not necessarily pleased about it is it an approved look uh, it's approved by it's approved by the woman who saw him last alive okay mm. uh huh yep yeah, I think that says <laughs> that says loads yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I take it. I'm, and it, well, and, it's, it's and some of the players in it know the truth about what happened and the fact that they are involved. They are part of the corruption. They are part of the system. And at some point, either spiritually, karmically, whatever it is, trust me, the ancestors are not pleased and they shall pay. Mm-hmm. So if, if you were to tell <laughs> the story of your father, I mean, what, what would be the most important things that would have to come through? That he was a man of truth. He was a man of truth. He was a man of courageous um courageous in his destiny courageous um for the fact that when he set him on himself on fire he knew he knew that he was involved in something that he couldn't break free from and he tried to break himself free from it mm-hmm. and um and he didn't want his kids to be a part of that mm-hmm. um and he wasn't able to break free from it and he spoke about it at least with us and he spoke about that truth and that um I think as a performer and, and an artist, I don't know what other story other than him as a father could be told. We've seen so many biopics. Yeah. He wrote his own. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Jojo Dancer, Life yeah. is Calling. He wrote, produced, and directed it. So I don't know what other story other than the fabricated or the uh, delusional story hmm. that someone else could tell about my father other than his own children and their experience or lack of experience with him. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Yeah. All right. So, did you like the documentary, or mythologic, or it's all the same? It omitted a lot of things, mm. but l- I don't. I didn't see the logic. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'm granted, yeah. you, you and and stepmom don't really get along. Right. I mean, there was a there was a big thing a few about a year two years ago right. in the papers where she was actually trying to sue you. It wasn't get- a few years ago. That actually was about ten to fifteen years ago. It was right before my father had passed. And how how it really breaks down is this: in in the early in this in the sixties, around the time where my mom and my dad had met and fallen in love, my mom and my dad wanted to make this movie, Uncle Tom's Fairy Tales, and they did. My mom put in all the money for it. Penelope Spheris, who was um, actually she wasn't even directing it at the time, but she was a part of of the process. Um, were kept the film and its footage and all the stuff because no one could finish paying for it at mm. the time and um so my mom and my dad split up Pe- penelope holds on to this she finds the footage years later she decides she wants to put it in archives because it's such a political piece i mean it's it's an all-black jury 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Against a white man who's accused of rape. Wow. So, um, and even the concept is so far ahead of its time. We're talking 1968, 1969 that right. this is being done. You know, um, and so she tries to do this and she thinks in her right mind because Jennifer comes after her to come and give it to me because it's in its rightful place for the people who put the money into it, which was my mother and my father. Mm-hmm. And when the papers came that I am being sued for something that actually belonged to my mother, mm-hmm. my mom said, I want no part of this or that woman, just give it to her. Mm-hmm. And so I did. Hmm. So th- this is, a, and, and you, I didn't but fight. But you've seen this film, like Richard Absolutely. stars in it, and yeah, and it's 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 you know it's not all totally pieced together. It is what it is, and it's but it's great filmmaking and it's great history, hmm. because my dad was so brilliant and smart. He was so ahead of his jump start in what the world could be, what it could reflect. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And this is kind of that 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 gem okay mm-hmm. yeah. now is it as good as california sweet <laughs> now just say that to segue into segue the- into <laughs> mr jello pudding um yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't close your eyes and eat the pop um <laughs> no <laughs> well I, it's 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 in, well i mean obviously you know you can't you, look you, i've, you, I've you known can't, you i knew talk, about all talk, this michigas as we Jewish people will say, I yeah. learned about all this Michigas, <laughs> you know, when I was a kid. So I, I've known this story has been going on for years, and I knew people who have been d- directly affected uh, or initiated, and mm-hmm. um, and so I, f- you know, it's 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 coming out now. Why, for reasons maybe someone didn't pay the piper, I don't know. Uh. Initiated. Yeah, mm-hmm. not, not, mm-hmm. okay. uh, women fully un- feel that. Trust okay. me when I say I, I, I want to Hopefully say Hopefully the other half of your audience felt it too I, Yeah I, I, what, what, what I mean astonishes me Yes About some of the conversations we've had on this yes. airwaves About this whole mess Right Is that there are people I, I wonder what the, the level of Show me the proof is That would satisfy 2015's public okay. because that's what people let, seem let, to be asking no. for let me explain that to you okay we have we again let's go back to our ancestry we get ripped from our homes we get ripped from our culture we every icon that we have tried to build up either gets shot down dead gets um, stolen from us right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you have one that's that is creates this family of the working black family but they're they're upper middle class they're making things happen they have the kids they have the babies they're having culture they're having conversation and he puts himself on on this level of esteem and right now the carpet's being ripped out from on him so psychologically we go to that place of every single person we have lifted up has been pulled down mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we don't want to lose that right right but he should never have sold himself out to make that happen in the damn first place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we are so, as a people, willing to be belittled by our own, which he did, from standing across the stage talking about our families and how we should raise our kids. Mm-hmm. When meantime, behind his closed door and her closed door, stuff was going on. Mm-hmm. It's always the person who's pointing the finger. <laughs> but we want to shoot down someone like my dad for telling the truth on stage about the fact that he beat women and he did whatever. He never drugged them. He talked about it. He was honest. And he made amends for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't want to hear the voices of the people who are really powerful. The Dick Gregory's, the Martin Luther King's, the Malcolm X's. Because we don't want to know that truth. Because no it's, one was it's hard. Bill- no one- right. It is hard. So we'll pacify ourselves with a half truth of this or that. And now we'll look for it. We'll look for let's not take down our icons. Give me more t- proof. Let's not take down our icons. Give me more proof. Mm-hmm. The, but, the, but the thing is, we have to face our own corruption and watch who we are holding up. Mm-hmm. Who are we holding up? If you can't speak a truth and say, yeah, I've done this in the past or I did this and it's really messed up and... I didn't want to be that person anymore and I'm going to change my life fine. But if you are involved in Holly weird, right? And Mm -hmm. you haven't learned how to be in it and not of it and you are of it, you are part of that all seeing eye no matter which way that you go. Yeah. And it's gonna come a time where you're gonna have to pay the piper. 
Otherwise, they're going to pull that stuff out of your closet. That's one thing about my dad. There was nothing in his closet. <laughs> yeah, right. It was all mm-hmm. out front. Thank you. I could not help. Every time Dave Chappelle talked about Dave the decision Chappelle. that he made to remove himself from the madness, mm-hmm. I couldn't help but think about your father. Right. Because this idea of what we do to genius. Yes. And genius that lives that far out front. Yes. Um, and tries to grapple with all of the the stimuli that yes. that fuels the the bits on stage, right. but is also fueling the the life at home. Right. Um, I, I don't know that we're prepared for that. It's the same people who say to me because they know how I feel about music that I can't listen to NDR because her stuff is too happy. Right. What? Or I need. Mm-hmm. Or I, and I've talked right. about this right, for the right, website. Yeah, yeah. Or you know, Mary J's music was better when she was getting her butt beat. You know, like mm-hmm. who right. says that? Who says that? That. But that's the kind of mentality <laughs> right. that we're in. It's like, but we, we live in that live world. We're in the matrix. We're, we're in the re- we're in the reality series that's not really reality world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We want to watch other people fail because we can't see our again. We can't see our own greatness. We can't see our own power. You know, and it is my responsibility as someone on this planet. I don't care if you think I'm crazy. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I want to help you to see your power. Yeah. I want you to know that you are great. I want to look at every young black girl with her beautiful, dark, ebony skin that's much, much darker than mine because I'm on the lightest shade and go, yes, you are beautiful. You are mount to something. You are a queen. Treat yourself as such. I want to say every girl with her light, light skin and her and her hair that it flows or not or she bought it from India, <laughs> right. you know, that sells for whatever that one, she, one, she doesn't need to do that unless she wants to. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And that she is beautiful just the way she is. Mm-hmm. That the color of her skin is beautiful just the way she is. And it doesn't separate you from you and you. And there's no, do you know what I mean? We're all... We are all equal on the level on which we are empowered. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's a definite period and, and on the set. Please, please make form. sure people know Absolutely. how to come out. Yes, and come out to Real tonight. Black and the Painted Bride. Sorry to get off topic. I'm here because my documentary is showing <laughs> so, that daughter is crazy. <laughs> so this is just a taste. I know, damn. Yeah. We, we're going to experience the movie That Daughter's Crazy tonight at 7 yes. o'clock at the Painted yes. Bride Art Center, 230 Vine Street. Admission is $10, $8 for students and seniors. Nice. And uh, yeah, so you can't beat it. You can't beat that. Rain yeah, is going to be there the signing right? copies of your book. Yeah. Yes. Uh, lies, my, jokes my, my father, father never, never taught, taught me. me. Life, love, and loss with right. Richard Pryor. So you want to have that in your collection for sure. Yes. And but that's uh, more than $10 or $8. Just let me know. <laughs> just yeah, so no. you know. We, we, yeah, this is, we're on the come up here. It's Friday. Got a seven-year-old. She got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but Rainy's Rain going to stick around and sign them. So yes, yes, It's actually sir. priceless. Yes, sir. And, and a Q&A as well. You know, more wisdom, more, uh, no filter. No filter. As, as promised. Right. So, yes, sir. So hopefully uh, folks listening now we'll, we'll come and, and join and us if you them. are listening now besides coming to the documentary and supporting you know uh, black owned radio or whatever be sure that in your life today that you do something that shows black life matters mm-hmm. that you matter it matters and so do something that is reflective of that each and every day when you wake up Right. And the last thing I, I just need to say uh, today, opening at the PFS Roxy Theater and the AMC Cherry Hill is the movie Unexpected, which played at Sundance. And uh, you can go to realblack.com later on today to listen to an interview with the co star Gail Bean. Mm. Excellent. Well, remember here on the Mojo, we always encourage you to embrace and explore your black magic. Rain Pryor, it has been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. We got to do this I again. Thank you for having me. Yes. I love that it's we like, can talk real. So thank kindred you. spirits, kindred okay. spirits for sure. We are going to get out of here and make way for our friends at UPP and the Empower Hour is coming up next, bridging you with your political and entrepreneurial power and how that needs to be exercised in our community along with a whole host of other great programming throughout the day here on 900 AM WURD, streaming live online at 900 AM WURD.com and available wherever you might be in the world as long as you've got an internet signal and our free app for iPhone and Android. Stay plugged in and connected. And Lord willing, we do this all over again, 10 AM on Monday and hope that you will be tuned in at that time. Thank you as always, Mike D. Yes, this was a lot of fun. Yes, indeed. Take care, everybody. 
You've been listening to a podcast of The Mojo with Steph Renee. Weekdays, 10 a.m. till noon. Follow us on your favorite social media like Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for up-to-the-minute information at 900 a.m. WURD.